ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your host, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with... I'm just Mateo. It's okay. <laughs> Let's talk to them. That's right. That's right. We have two incredible guests, I want to say in the building, but at least in the Zoom building because of, you know, right. COVID. We got Sarah and Josh from one of our favorite all-time groups, Fanagram. Sarah and Josh, how are you two doing today? We doing good. are doing great. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Hey, no problem. Thanks for joining us. Um, so I'll just kind of get started real quick. Uh, you know, Ceremony came out like right about at the same time that COVID pretty much started taking over the U.S. What have sure you did. been up to, you know, <laughs> and again, great Al, but you're like, damn it, it sure did. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> so how has life been for you to, you know, being like, for one, dropping an album in the beginning of COVID and really just kind of everything since? Um, uh, I mean, it, it was pretty fucking frustrating. Um, <laughs> we, we, I mean, again, it was one of those situations where, you know, so many other people have it so much worse right. and um it was one of those things where you i think for at least like for myself i i felt i was like well okay we got it out and like trying to see the positive side of it um but it was a huge bummer it was really it was it was a bummer that kind of led us into the whole COVID thing. Just, I, I mean, at least for me, I was like, fuck music. I'm never writing a song again. <laughs> like you can't make, you know, like, just like, I'm over it. But luckily that was just a full phase. Uh, it mm. lasted about maybe two months. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, it was, I mean, two months alone in a, in your, in a completely complete solitude. I mean, right. usually Josh and I, Josh and I are together when we're in solid, like we're writing records in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. We're completely fine and used to that kind of living, but, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, as everybody has their own experience, um that was a pretty dark <laughs> beginning uh of covid but we did like we did kimmel uh like right before mm -hmm. <laughs> like the day before lockdown basically Damn. yeah and then we went to amoeba remember that was the, the we went to amoeba uh, for signing we, yeah and we did a signing but it's it supposed to be like a like a meet and greet but we couldn't, so it was kind of good because we didn't have to shake everybody's hands. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know, Which but there's a lot of, um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, alcohol spray and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah. And but, then... um, oh yeah, and then we went, no, what we did right before COVID officially, official lockdown started was we thought it would be a good idea to go to a huge show at the Coliseum to go see, um, uh, what's the name of the band? Tame Impala. Tame Impala. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Thank and God. That was our last show we ever, we ever saw. We'll ever wow. see. Wow. My daughter's actually yeah. supposed to go see them this year and she was super bummed. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. What was, were you guys going to tour with this ceremony? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We had like a, a three month tour set up. We were gonna do like a co-headline um, tour with a, a pretty, you know, big band. It was gonna be a lot of fun, and uh, now we're sitting at our houses doing this. But yeah. this is cool. I mean, uh, it's weird. It's been really weird. It's hard to like, you know, everybody thinks that that you're supposed to like get in the best physical shape. Or Aren't write a, a novel, or like, <laughs> or like, be like, you know, write the best music ever. This, that, and the other thing, you know. And and I think it's been actually a little tough at times to like get yeah. in that zone because it's a little, it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, talking about the best music ever, I mean, ceremony is incredible lyrically. Um, yeah, thank you. I, That's yeah, great. Yeah. Awesome. Very awesome. Um, this is the fourth person that we've talked to about the album. <laughs> it came out, so that's great. I'm glad you like it, though. No, I, I love it. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, you know, speaking of that, we thought, you know, three was going to be hard to beat because to us, and one of the questions we had from fans, literally, there was like five or six people that were like, can you just ask them why they're so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that's one thing I guess we want to ask too, because, you know, obviously every album, you guys just keep growing and growing and, you know, it's like aging like fine wine, you know, I mean, uh, voice is fantastic, you know, then, then we get I three and, you know, ceremony right after that. And so I guess, you know, if you can answer the fans, like what makes you guys so awesome. And, you know, as far as just kind of inspiration and maybe a little bit just about the process too. I think a lot of people are definitely interested as, you know, as it, I, I know it's a collaboration as far as writing songs, but you know, what's kind of, and I'm sure it changes every album, but you know, what's mm -hmm. something that makes you guys mesh as far as when you are working on your albums. out from a lot of different bands is that we we've modeled ourselves after bands that we truly admire that kind of change a lot they don't just stick to the same program so like for example like david bowie pink floyd radiohead um the beatles uh you know prince stuff like that like stuff people that just aren't afraid of changing and so we're never trying to like recreate the same thing over and over again so right. i think that's what keeps us fresh sometimes people don't like it but you know that's okay with us you know but um personally i don't think we've ever enjoyed really listening to bands that just do the same shit on every album right you know what i mean um can you elaborate on that sarah yeah um uh, I think it's really important for us to, um, and I, and I think it's important for every artist to not be afraid of uncomf feeling uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, feeling, feeling too comfortable in their space and art that they have made where they know what will work and they always kind of just the go-to, I think. For us, we always kind of gravitated more towards um, just one step ahead of that. And also just being, having the idea always of, of being fresh and new and, and innovative yeah. um, is always, oh, since day one, like when Josh and I first started a band, our first influence just as, as a band was Outcast, um, And we strived to be just weird and, and just... <laughs> next level you yeah. know um above our uh, ahead of our time kind of thing so yeah and like you know, outside the parameters of like if you take outcast for example they're i guess on paper they're they're hip-hop you know but they're so much more than that mm -hmm. as well they're they're hip-hop they're funk they're soul they're rock and roll they're psychedelic they're mm -hmm. they're comical they're dead serious they do mm -hmm. like everything and um and also we modeled ourselves after a quemini too because i'm a gemini and sarah's aquarius so that was like that's just kind of like a big yeah yeah that was just a, a real big almost like uh something to like look at like i don't i don't even know why we never had an outcast poster in the barn when we first started but definitely a big influence we thought we were them <laughs> true we did so did you guys reach out to Big Boy? Or was it the other way around? No, he reached out to us. Really? Um, awesome. He posted on his, he had a, a blog, blog of sorts, a music blog, and um, he posted our first song, Mouthful of Diamonds, mm -hmm. that we released, saying that he loved it, and um, we found out and um, tried to keep our cool, and uh, <laughs> responded back to him on Twitter. Um, and then we met, met him and he's just the nicest, incredible human being. I mm -hmm. have nothing but, oh, I love him. I wish he was my father. <laughs> <laughs> well, Big Rams is another one of our albums that we love too. And just what one, one hell of a kind of like uh, collaboration, I gotta say. Thanks. Oh, thank yeah, that was a, that was a trip. I mean, there will be another one, but the first, the first one, it was kind of unreal saying that yeah. you're playing big, band, too coming, big boy so another another one with big boy or another collaboration with another band uh with big boy and oh, 
you know, we're, yeah. we're open to, to all kinds of things. And we love collaborating. I think it was, a, that was our first collaboration experience. Mm-hmm. It was bizarre yeah. in general, but what, what's that, Josh? Oh, I said, yeah, like our, the first collaboration we ever did was on Big Boy's, his solo album. We mm-hmm. worked on like three songs with him and it just sounded really good and we all got along really well so we were like why don't we start a side project and we did it so and since then we've collaborated with a a lot of different artists you know from like flaming lips to miley cyrus to uh i don't know what else who else i'm even allowed to say but um <laughs> there's, there's some other I'm, stuff i'm personally a huge fan of uh Krangbin right now Krangbin? oh yeah they're awesome Love yeah. Them. i went to see them in texas and i think you guys should hook up and... <laughs> yeah. yeah these guys are great i think that'd be a really cool collab that like, uh, bad bad not good yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah awesome yeah. okay so those, that's the or like, um or uh or uh What's the Josh? What's the other band? Um, oh, uh, the, the Budos that, band. Budos band. They're fucking dope. <laughs> you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta check Budo. If you like Krungbin, yeah, Budo, okay. Budos band is is fire too. Right on. Sorry for yelling. No questions yet. Oh man. <laughs> Quit screaming at everybody. <laughs> I can't. Oh, wait. We, we can, can take it. Um, <laughs> how'd young. you guys land on Take Me Home? How'd you do that? The Phil Oh, yeah. 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 That was, uh, what was now it? Yeah, the time is now. Yeah, yeah we, we, uh, we worked with uh, Chris Carmouche, one of Outcast producers mm-hmm. that we met when we were working with, with Big. And yeah, we flew back down and recorded that with him. It was fun. No, we, we finished it with him because I remember starting it. We started it in LA out here, and then we flew back and finished it with Chris Car- Carmouche at Stankonia. Hmm. But that was for uh, like an AIDS awareness. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The time album. is now project. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think Sarah and I kind of arm wrestled a little bit with between. Um, I can feel it. Come, whatever that song right. is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that or Take Me Home. And I won with Take Me Home, but <laughs> we might do a, a cover of the other song. Oh, so there's uh, no In the Air Tonight on the cutting room floor anywhere? <laughs> yeah, I think so. We <laughs> talked about it. Not yet. I mean, I, I loved it because to me, that's one of my favorite Phil Collins songs. And especially just when you started off where, with the synth kind of version of it and then going from left speaker to right speaker. I mean, I was jamming in the car with my girlfriend and she thought that she's heard every Fanagram song. And I was like, you haven't heard it all yet because it actually showed up on my um, Spotify radio. So, and then I was oh, like, nice. oh, wow, like I didn't even know they did a cover for this. And then uh, I played it for, well, I knew a while back, but she had never heard it. So I played it for her in the car and she was blown away. So awesome, awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was thinking about that one. It's a good one. Do you guys, I saw on Spotify, there was a uh, Fanagram is now playing list. Do you guys curate okay. that or is that just a, like a random thing? No, we do it. We, yeah. we, we do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Sarah, just uh, like, ran, like, po- like you're talking about stories, like just posting a song or like. No, a there's a whole playlist, playlist that says that you're now listening to that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was recent. Okay. That was probably the beginning of the year. Oh, nice. I can't remember oh. what's going on right now, but probably to coincide with the release of the album. Oh, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Because <laughs> like, I know that there's forget like our a... forget our We have up. no forget excuse us. now, Josh. We can't be like, oh, we're so busy. We don't know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um. So, uh, you know, as far as Obviously, we we all miss live music. I know you two sure as hell must miss it. As far yeah. as you know, do you have any particular? And we ask most most bands this. We had Track Star from um, from on the Jewels on the show recently. Yeah. Asked him the right. same thing. But are are there specific you know festivals, towns, um, just venues that you just love playing at? Without, I mean, obviously, I know some venues may get more love than others. But to me, I would think that there are venues or festivals that. You're just like, hell yes, I cannot wait to go back to this place. 
Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, as far as like cities go, definitely Chicago, New York City. Yeah, Lollapalooza or Hangout Fest. Nice. Hangout Fest is awesome. Lala is a lot of fun. Coachella is fun to play. It's not fun to go to. Yeah, uh, that's what I hear. <laughs> unless you enjoy taking selfies all day. Um, <laughs> no. But uh, let's you get see. a lot of love back at home when you come back to New York, or? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do really well in New York City. Um, so last time we were there, we sold out King's Theater in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. nice. which is a pretty pretty big venue. As far as our home hometown, we get a reasonable amount of love. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like, we kind of come from um, a more rural area where people might tend to enjoy classic rock and country music mm -hmm. a little more, yeah. which, which is fine. Right. But, you know, we do okay, but it's not like crazy, right. I'd say. Yeah, it's just uh, a different, different scene. Yeah, yeah. But all um, of our friends and our fa family, everyone, they all come out nice. to support us, and it's like a big reunion, and uh, it's a it's a it's nice to be able to play those songs. Yeah. Uh, for them. Is this also where you record at the barn? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Where Where in upstate is that? I actually grew up in upstate New York in a little town called Johnson City. But I always told people Binghamton because it was on the map. Okay, so, yeah. Okay. So we're a little bit more north of there, okay. um, near Saratoga Springs. Oh, okay. More rural, more cl yeah. closer to, to Vermont. But, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Yeah, you're, you're right about the rural part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, other cities like Austin, Texas, yeah. is um, amazing. Like, oh, wow. that was fun. Uh, we were really looking forward to. Yeah, I just like there are certain things that I look forward to about a lot of different cities, like especially even the food. Yeah, like part of like I love like going to Austin so we can get like really good barbecue, barbecue. and yeah. stuff like that. You know, like um, uh, don't forget about uh, Montreal and their what is this cheese? What is this? Poutine. Poutine, baby. Oh, the, the fries with the uh, strip clubs yeah. and poutine. Yeah. Yeah. No particular order. <laughs> strip clubs, yeah, baby. One of my old roommates was Canadian, and he always made poutine. And I'm like, dude, I'm gaining like five pounds a week on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do you got? Oh. Um, so you know, we are a we are a, a pop culture podcast. We cover everything from movies video games, uh, music, of course, this, that, and the other, you know, whether during COVID, especially, I know there's a lot more people watching TV, but even before like uh, COVID, you know, what are some of your pop culture likes as far as, you know, what kind of movies do you love? Obviously, you know, some, some bands, you know, if you're gaming, doing anything like that, like what are some of your pop culture likes? Cause that's another question that the fans wanted to know is what do they like? So I can help relate to them a little bit more besides just love their music. Anything, yeah. anything that has Nick Cage in. Okay. We okay. Love are. It. Love it. We are all about Nick Cage. Have you seen Mandy? Culture. Yeah, Mandy was incredible. Mandy was awesome. It's like it's a really good movie to get high to, or <laughs> or take some acid to, you know, whatever you yeah. want. Um, it's, pop. it's fine. Um, um, what is, what is pop culture? Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be anything at all. Books, you know, just whatever you like. Well, you we know. love, we love, yeah. we love movies. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're very visual, we're visually, um, influenced when we write. Um, so always watching, um, a surreal kind of just dreamy, weird, creepy, dark kind of movie is always... A24. Um, I was going to say like A24 <laughs> films. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I'd say like one of my favorite movies I've seen in the past year was um, it's called Good Time. Oh, yeah, with, with Robert oh, Pattinson. 
Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that was that was <laughs> great. I loved that. Uh, dark. Yeah, super dark. Um, we started. Sarah and I like playing this game together called uh, Overcooked. <laughs> Have you ever heard of it? Uh, uh-uh, you got to tell us about this. <laughs> it's a game where you. Not. <laughs> I decided to start buying games for my uh, PlayStation because I don't really, I don't really play many video games. Right. But since it's COVID, I'm like, fuck it, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. just buy some shit. So I bought Overcooked, and you just run around making like dishes, and you can't. So you're in a restaurant. You you're in a restaurant. You're in a you're in a kitchen. So Josh, uh-huh. Josh and I. Sorry to interrupt, Josh. <laughs> I just got so excited You're about the game. Wrong, man. <laughs> well, so we have to know the backstory. So Josh and I waited tables in Saratoga Springs okay. for over I don't know, maybe over five years at least before yeah. like before we actually made it. So we didn't have to wait tables anymore. Yeah. But it was it's you know, it's a tourist town. There's a lot of there's a lot of stress in those kitchens, mm, and yeah. we knew about <laughs> yeah. it, so we related to it. So what you have to do is, uh, you have to cook the tomatoes, or you have to make the hamburger, and then you have to pass it over to the, the partner. Basically, you have to finish the meal, plate, get it out. Uh, it's basically full expediting, cooking, prep, cook, sous chef. It's all all that stress. And that's what you do with your PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> yep. That's what we, that's, this sounds more like in the weeds, the video game. It really is. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, that's. I think I yelled, and I'm in the weeds, Steve. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we both, uh, have this a I'm in the weeds. In background. So yeah. trust me. I, know I, I still have nightmares about being in the weeds, and I haven't bartended in three years. Oh, so, oh same. Yeah, in the it never weeds. leaves. No. Never leaves. <laughs> never <laughs> leaves. <laughs> Yelling, screaming, like running around with your head chopped off like a chicken. Just, oh my oh. god! The, oh so can you god! Do, is, this, is this like a multiplayer game? So do you guys play against each other? We play. We're on the same team. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. Now, now we need to buy that yeah. so you can have some more people playing because we know all about it's being a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. If you want to get stressed out. And yelling. Yeah, it's fun. All right, it gets that it gets that but, adrenaline going yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll definitely have to jump on that. So that's hilarious. Yep. Uh, so I can have <laughs> even more nightmares about being in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then as far as just kind of following up on the on the pop culture stuff, one of the things that we always like to ask, uh, you know, people on the show and the fans love hearing it too. If you were to have one superpower, what would that superpower be? Oh, shit. No, I was thinking about the, I, was, I was thinking about this question the other day, and I was like, "Oh, the next time someone asks me," <laughs> and now I can't remember. Come on, think about it. Oh, Josh! I would like to be invisible. I'll start then while you think. Oh, there, you there you go. Because uh, what? Why, Josh? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because. <laughs> When I'm walking around my neighborhood or I'm driving in my car and I drive by houses or apartments or whatever, I just want to go inside everybody's house just to see what it's like inside. <laughs> I just, I want to know what it smells like in there. Yeah, I want to see, wanna... like, I want to see how dirty it is or how clean it is or how, like, yeah, I, I want to see, right. like, yeah, what what's in the are, fridge what's in the fridge i want to see what people are fighting about if they are or like if they're like what video games they're playing yeah you know? i don't want to be intrusive i just want to be invisible and like, be a, in you want to be a ghost you know? <laughs> yeah so i mean hopefully when i die i can be a ghost yeah that's yeah um, those are goal- <laughs> hashtag goals <laughs> right there baby Woo! um I didn't come up with it, but uh, we'll, <laughs> all right, yeah, um, we have the rest of the episode to come up with it, but you have to right, come up I'll, with it by the time we get off. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, so the cover for three, is that just a, um, like a picture or were you guys there or what is that? Like a bonfire? Did you do that? That, that was an idea that I had for the album where, well, at first I, I was talking to Sarah, I was like, what if we had like a picture of a house burning down. Um, 
but like and have like a white background make it look kind of like just tragic but hopeful at the same time with the white mm -hmm. and because the album is surrounded by a lot of tragedy and like some kind of dark stuff we thought that would be a, a cool idea so we scrapped the house and ended up with that image and we thought it was just cool yeah. oh it's awesome yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome um you know since we're since we're talking about three this question is really from myself matthew and you know my daughter she's 18 going on 19 sophomore at uncw so she's a big fan as well i remember playing you in the car and she was like you know, maybe 15 or 16, like, Dad, who's this? And I was what like, is that? Yeah. oh, this is Dan <laughs> And um, she's, right. she's been a big fan son. So she actually sent me a few questions, but this one we, we all kind of have. So Answer is is one of our, you know, favorite songs, definitely. And it, it, there's so many to choose from, seriously. Like, we're not just here to, like, blow smoke up you guys, but, like, we are true fans, love your music. Um, the first Thank time you. I heard Answer, like, it gave me, like, shivers. And it still does to this day. And we just kind of want to know, like, how that song came about and the inspiration to it, because I just think it's just a wonderful collaboration of, of, you know, the singing from both of you. It's just a great song. And I saw you perform it live, too. And you could just see, like, the crowd just really just feeling the hell out of it. Not that they don't on other songs, but. Yeah, no, no. That that one that one gives yeah. me bumps every time I play yeah. it. So I, I think it's both of our favorite songs to play. Wow, really? Right? Wow. Um, song yeah. to play. Definitely one of them, for sure. Like, I, yeah, I really love playing that song um so what was the question again though yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we're all sorry. in the field right we're now all in the we're all in the moment. <laughs> so uh in particular she kind of wanted to know like how how the song came about and i guess we all do you know like yeah. it, it touches us it moves it us from? when i play it for people that have never even heard of you guys before like it gives dumb chills it's moving and it like makes yeah. them into, like yeah it's just an incredibly moving song cool Oh, uh, well, thank you. It's, I think it started with, uh, well, so a lot of our songs kind of like come together differently over time. And it's a combination of some ideas that I had a long time ago before the band, even um, before Fanagram, there was some stuff that I had written that I liked. Uh, yeah, it was like be with the one that you love, right? Yeah, that that line and that kind of phrasing and all and the chord progression there. But then, you know, fast forward fifteen years in Fantagram, and I end up sampling something off a different record that I can't mention, um, and that sounded really cool. And then we decided to replay it on piano. And it all just kind of came together and we wanted to make it like give it a nice big build and explosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really love the way it's sort of like a, in a way, like a dialogue between the two of us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. It's magic, man. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's magic in the form of a song. That's for damn sure. <laughs> it's magic. Thank you. Yeah. Right on. Um, oh, man. Okay, real quick. What's your favorite? Who's your favorite Wu Tang member? Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> I know we didn't go. it wasn't gonna be like sixty minutes, but we have like the pop culture sixty minute questions. I mean, <laughs> yeah. either way, you're not wrong. Right. So there's no wrong answer here. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm you're just gonna go it? ahead and say Ghostface, like. Like uh, Supreme Clientele is one of my favorite albums of all time. So, are you guys down with that? You guys with me? Absolutely, on that? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Liquid Swords is is great too. Is, is, is a, you know, uh, but yeah, I think just and I love Raekwon. I love all of Wu Tang. You yeah. know, Inspect the Deck, but. Uh, Supreme clientele is just too important to me of a solo album mm -hmm. to deny. Yeah. Um, I'm, I will have to say uh, Method Man for me. Nice. Okay. Uh, because of his, uh, his charisma in Wu-Tang, but also 
when he released that album, I think Level Ex no Level Extinction. No, that was that's Plus no, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the one in that late '90s with like it, there was an album? It was with oh, uh, oh, Janet Jackson. Yeah, it, was after, it was after To Cal Judgment Day or something like. Yeah, that. Yeah, Judgment oh, Day. Yeah, that was one of my one of my first first hip hop albums that I w would just listen to front to back, just mm. like trying to learn the lyrics and not try and sing them uh, in the mirror in my room or anything, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for that. And ODB, of course. Oh, yes. RIP. Yeah. Um, ODB wrote one of the best lines I think I've ever heard. And it's, I don't got a little problem with you fucking me, but I got a little problem with you not fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, yes. much better than that. Oh, no, baby. no, you, so cannot. no you cannot. No, you cannot. Love it. I mean, he didn't get burnt once by gonorrhea. He got burnt twice, twice by gonorrhea. <laughs> no problem <laughs> happening about it. <laughs> it was only gonorrhea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord, it made it seem like he had the flu. Uh, uh, two things that I wanted to mention um, that that also touched me, but like answered us. Mm -hmm. um, on Mr. Impossible, whatever it is in the beginning, if it's horns or it's synth, I don't know what it is. Don't tell me. I want to rock with it as if it's horns because the, it blares and I love it. Um, on pedestal, you said uh, you can make a hospital lovely. Now, I don't know if you know my story. Um, I had a heart transplant in 2019. Wow. Oh, wow. And I spent about a year in a hospital because anything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Um, oh. So wow. now I look at people and I'm like, Thank you for coming. You made the hospital lovely. And I also look at people and I'm like, damn, I would rather be in the hospital. It's so much lovelier than talking to you right now. So it's a bit of a double entendre for me. Yeah. Uh, of a double entendre. And thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that that's crazy. Crazy. comment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Wow. wow. Oh, that's God not bless yes. you. Glad you're. Thank you. How long ago was, how long ago was it? 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's actually, my heart failed the end of 2016, and then I spent most of 2017 in the hospital. I was open three times. Mm -hmm. Three times? So he, wow. he was actually the big inspiration for, for us to start the podcast, because yeah. I was going through a breakup at the time, and I was like, I need something to kind of get my mind off this. We both suffer from depression, anxiety, the whole nine yards, and I'm like, what can I do yeah. to you know, pick him up? And I, I was worried. Because I was like, listen, we talk about music, movies, everything all the time anyways. Why don't we go ahead and start a podcast? And, you know, he was still resting because he got these plates, uh, you know, right there on his rib cage to keep everything in. And so he, like, gets up, and I'm like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that's an excellent idea. So uh, he's, he was a big inspiration for us starting the wow. podcast. So. And like I said, you That's guys have been, um, you know, you're definitely up there as one of our favorite bands, if not our favorite. So this, yeah. this means a lot to, to the two of us. So thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you. I was listening to you guys a lot in the hospital and had some really cool nurses that knew who you were too. And which was rare. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I pride myself on, you know, my, my music catalog and, yeah. and talking to people. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, also get it. You know, it's, it's totally awesome. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the best part about our fans. I think it, they're, they're diehard mm. fans. So when you meet somebody who is a fan, you know, like. Right. And you're not just getting the generic questions like, well, tell me about the album. Mm. And yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, even yeah, though yeah. you want to know who your inspirations are, I'm sure you can tell when people interview you that they're just like going down their checklist of what they ask everybody else. Oh, for sure. yeah. not fans. Right. So those are the worst. You know, I bet. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, you can have a beer with us. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, next time you're in North Carolina, would love to rock with you. Uh, yeah, a sure. girlfriend yeah. of mine at the time, oh, yeah. I wasn't able to go, but she saw you guys at the Fillmore in Charlotte, and she was sending me a couple okay. video uh, clips. This was back maybe 2015, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I had my daughter for the weekend or something, and we just weren't able to make the trip. But and I, I, I do believe you were here in Raleigh last year for mm -hmm. Hopscotch Festival. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, that was then, the fun you know, one. Of course, I was out of town for that, so I've yet to see outside? you live. That was outside, right? Yeah, it was like yeah, it was, it was a, like a two day, two day thing. Run the Jewels was there the year before. You guys were one of the main ones on Sunday night, along with a uh, little brother at the other venue. So it's like oh, multiple yeah. venues. Um, but yeah, I believe it was at Red Hat in Raleigh, which is 
one of our favorite venues because it's like an amphitheater, but it's not, you don't feel like you're 300 yards in the back. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah. 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 I, remember that I, one. Think, I think churches play. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's correct. I, so. I do. I do have one more question from my daughter and I'm actually going to read it to you how she sent it to me verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, um, you know, so this is to you, her speaking to you. Would you accept a storyboard for a music video for one of your songs by two super dope UNCW film students? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'll be sure to, to let yeah. her know. And that was We're actually- all about it. Our, our favorite music video ever was 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 handed to us that uh, from somebody who was just like, hey, I loved your uh, funeral pyre. Oh, um, nice. We weren't. We're not in it. We're had no, we had nothing to do with it. It right. was just what he made, and he sent it to us and was like, "Hey, just want you to see this." And um, we you, we ended up using it and releasing it. So my my favorite favorite one. That's awesome. Yeah. So send it away. <laughs> we'll be sure to art respects it art, man. It's just, <laughs> yeah. If it's dope, yeah. it's dope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. It works. It works. Um, yeah. We got uh, like an intruding question, kind of. Fucking go for it, bro. <laughs> um, is there know. is there any truth to like this um like Portishead beef, where they like said that you ripped something off of them and? No, well, there's, <laughs> it's the basically what happened was, um, I I took a sample of a sample. Mm -hmm of a sample basically. <laughs> right so um if you do, no matter how you break it down it just like there there was no way to like really fight it so everything's good there's no beef or anything like that it was just kind of like a miscommunication by somebody who is maybe a little older and ornery <laughs> you know but I, everything's good and cleared up with that. Good, good, good. Yeah. yeah. They asked me about that yesterday. I was like, I've never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was never any. Like you guys both. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to have to burn their stuff. Delete their catalog. No, I mean we we love Portishead. Like uh, third is is uh, probably one of my favorite albums. It's such yeah. a good album. It is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I can't diss on them, for sure. Right. Unless they do that again. <laughs> <laughs> this is your warning. Who came up with Fantagram? Because you were there was a letter name before Fantagram, right? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we Charlie see that two names too, so we get it. Who's Charlie? Yeah, and we spent, oh, Charlie, um, Who's Charlie, Josh? Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> it's, we'll just keep it as an inside joke. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> basically, we, we, we didn't have a, we didn't have enough time to come up with a name. You know, we had music, but no name. Right. So, and then like, we wanted to release music, but you can't just release music without a name. And also we started booking shows with barely any songs written and no name. So we had that. And then once people started taking interest in our music, like on a bigger scale, we're like, hold up, like, why don't we come up with a name that we actually like? Mm -hmm. And we were, we thought about it for like at least two months. And finally, I was like, what about Fantagram? Like, maybe this idea of, like, a telegram from another dimension. And, like, we started, like, kind of, like, looking into the meaning of Fantagram. Like, it, it's an actual real thing, like an optical illusion. And um, it works, so we just went with it. Yeah. I just recently found that, that journal with all like the list of all the names that we were trying to come up with. Awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, like ghost hands, remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like psychic, psychic divers. We were thinking of naming our band. We were actually thinking of naming our band um, Eyelid Movies. 
Oh, oh yeah. that's your promo. Obviously, album. Yeah. before the album, the yeah. album was even finished. So we were yeah. we were kind of in the same situation when we first started. We were so excited to get in the studio. I'm like, look, if we spend months, you know, trying to figure out a name, we're never going to record shit. So our yeah. first name, you know, I try to get cute with it. I try to combine multicultural and pop culture. So it was multi poptural, which, you know, is cute, but like people would butcher it all the time. And <laughs> I, I yeah, wasn't yeah. seeing it. <laughs> so finally, yeah. we just took it up to a vote with our fans. Um, and yeah. I forgot what the list was. It was a ton of stuff in there. And, you know, just, I think I just got done watching Zero Dark 30. And yeah. I was like, well, you know, Zero Dark Nerdy sounds kind of cool. And we put it up for a vote and it won like 81% of the votes. And I'm like, that's it. Nice. That's what we're going to be. And then we're just going to keep it moving. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the whole time like we were multi popsural I was like, I, we got to come up with something new. But at the same time, I'm like, we have to keep recording episodes. So you don't yeah, always get it out of work on the first one. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I do want to give a big shout out to my good friend, uh, Angela out there. She was one of the first ones to introduce me to, to you as well as Matthew. And um, her, she lives in Michigan now, but her grandmother didn't like a lot of new music and only like you guys, but she would put wow. your name and she would say oh that instagram band is so good so i wanted to give angela a big shout out and uh you know r.i.p to her grandmother but you were one of the only new bands that like after 1980 that she even messed with so that's great wow. hey well that's yeah. awesome that's great that's hilarious because uh fantagram i mean that was that was even before instagram right that was years before right i don't even remember when instagram started so. I remember yeah. when Instagram, Instagram came out, I was like, man, this is dumb. And what I love about you guys, too, is, you know, uh, Josh, I've reached out to him a few times. And, you know, the fact that you guys do respond to your fans, too, I think is, is massive. I know you can't get to every, yeah. every comment and every message. But that's how this whole thing came about, was just me reaching out to Josh. And he's like, hey, we'll get with my people. And at the time, you were with a different um, management company. And then you yeah. switch in, so now you're with who you got now. And like I said, they're, they've been incredibly responsive, incredibly awesome. And to me, I think it's it's always important to at least try to respond to, you know, as many people as you possibly can. And I think you two are a great example of that. So, you know, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we try. You know, like you said, it's hard to, like, keep up with everybody. But yeah, I, I know that at least – when I was just a fan of of bands or like even now if I reached out to somebody that I admired it would mean a lot to me if they got back so yeah. you know well this is like I said a dream come true for us so you know the next time once COVID's over we'd love to see you live uh um, yeah. yeah. you know, hopefully get to we'll have a person. beer yeah yeah yes. love to have a beer with yeah. you yeah. anytime you're in the Carolinas definitely let us know and but uh, we definitely appreciate Absolutely. your time. Um, everybody go out and get Ceremony. If you have not gotten it yet, as well as the rest of their catalog. And you can pretty much find your music pretty much everywhere, right? iTunes, uh, mm -hmm. Spotify. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of course, check out the website. You guys got that awesome merch out there. And that's just fanagram.com, correct? Yes. Yeah. So perfect. Any, any shout outs that you guys want to give out to, you know, whoever, friends, families, whoever, before, before we sign off and we'll, um, we'll stop recording and just, you know, catch up here in a little bit. Um, well, I just want to give a shout out to Sarah over there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I haven't seen you in a week, Josh. I know it's been a whole week. How's Leroy and Carl? They're all right. You know, they're itchy and scratchy. I call them now. <laughs> okay. Like, my new my new pets so i just scratch Aww. and itch all, all the time but they're good my pet turtles are good my koi fish pets are good and that's it that's all i've got <laughs> i made spaghetti yesterday last night i was gonna send a picture josh, josh, <laughs> josh is the i mean obviously he's with best friends but we're the he's the only person that i talk to on a daily daily basis like mm -hmm. we catch up and we use facetime and uh t talk about absolutely nothing That's during awesome. this during lovely lives, time yeah. in our lives yeah. so lucky to have you joge <laughs> likewise <laughs> johnny <laughs> josh any shout outs you want to give out besides just sarah or sarah or anybody else <laughs> oh 
Nothing. <laughs> oh, we can't, we can't let you off the hook this easy, Sarah. We need the superpower. Uh, oh. oh, you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. What was it? It was so good the other day. I mean, flying, teleportation. Teleportation will be mine just because, nice. you know, I want to oh. be able to get to wherever yeah. I get to just like that. That would be great. That yeah. would be great. I have a feeling it was, I feel like we, uh, we have the same one, Josh. Really? We look through people's windows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch out for Pandagram peeping in the yeah. uh, neighborhood near you. <laughs> Is that the name of the next album? <laughs> Creep, yeah. Creeping through windows. <laughs> is that, is that uh, we'll get, Hang out for a second. We're going to do the sign off here. Uh, okay. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy. Again, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. Big shout out to the P Believe Bot Podcast Network. That is B L E A V. Of course, like, subscribe, follow, all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Listen to Fanagram. Bye, Ceremony. <laughs> there it is. Peace. <laughs>